Hey guys, happy Workflow Wednesday. I hope everyone is having a beautiful day. In continuation to our Flow Logic series, also known as Flowjig, we will be talking about do the following parallel. We've successfully covered if else statements for each loop, flow variables, wait for conditions, and do the following until. Wow. We've covered almost all of the flow logic components in less than a month. That's really good for us. I'm really proud of us so far. And all of the links to each topic will, of course, be in the description of this YouTube video. Now, for today's video, what is do the following in parallel? Do the following in parallel is a flow logic that runs actions and subflows in separate paths. So it basically allows you to run actions and subflows separately without it affecting each other. Does that make sense? So one, an action is not dependent on another one or subflow is not dependent. It's not dependent on each other. So that's what do the following in parallel does. It allows each action and each subflows to run without it being dependent on each other. Now, for our use case for today, we want to send an email to the company's HR badge team to revoke ID access, and also we want to assign a task to the company's software asset team to revoke any devices from an employee whenever the request for resignation has been approved. Now. How do we go about implementing this type of use case? First, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to create a catalog item that handles employee request leave, for leave rather. Then the approval will be directed to the manager of the said employee. And if the manager approves the request, then we go ahead and initiate our parallel flow logic where we will be assigning a task to the software asset team to take back any devices. Then we will also send an email to the HR badge team to revoke the employee badge or any IDs that the employee may have within the system. So these two actions, like I said, will be fired in parallel without depending on each other. And once they're both complete, we then proceed to end this flow. Or if the approval is canceled, we end the flow as well. We need to also keep in mind that with um, tasks, we need to make sure that they're closed for the flow to end as well. So now that I've said all of that, let's get into our system and get started. So like I said, first of all, we're going to be creating a catalog item. So to go to catalog item, I have it pulled up, of course, but to get to it, you can just search up maintain items on your application navigator and it will take you there. So what I'm going to do is to, oops, okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is to create a a catalog item that handles the employee's leave request that we said. So what I'm gonna name this is employee leave. The catalog we're going to, is going to be service catalog. And then for our category is going to be can we so that's all we need to do. For our flow, we haven't initiated or created the flow yet. So that's why this is empty, of course. So what we just need to do is to right click and save in order to set our variables. So I'm just gonna be setting two variables. My first variable is going to be the employee who is requesting leave. And then, oh, I'm, and then it's just also going to be the reason for the leave. So I'm going to click on the reference field. I'm making this read only.
because only the employees allowed to um, request the leave. So. Auto populate the current user on the record. You just type this simple. So this simple syntax right here will just auto populate the current user. And that's all we need. And I'm just going to go ahead and also put this in order as well and just save it. I'm also going to set my last variable, which is going to be a single line text. I'm going to set the order to 20. That's all. We are done with creating our catalog item. So let's quickly try it. And there we go. Our employee request for leave has been created. So now let's jump into our flow and set our parallel logic. So to get to Flow Designer, you can search your Flow Designer, Process Automation, or Workflow Studio, of course, on your application navigator and it would show up. So I'm going to be creating a new flow. And then for my trigger, I am setting it to service catalog because we are setting this triggers whenever a requested item has been submitted, a request has been made, basically. So, for my action, what I'm going to do in order to reference the catalog that we created for employee leave, we need to get it. There we go, finally. So. What catalog, where, where are we retrieving this from? From our requested item record. And then here we're able to get the catalog item that we created, which was employee leave request. This allows us to retrieve the variables because we're gonna need those. And then we press done. <clears throat> Then what else do we need? After we are after we retrieve the catalog variables after this has been submitted, after this request has been submitted, we said that we wanted to ask for approval from the manager. So that's gonna be our next action. So our next action is going to be ask for approval. Where for what record are we asking for approval? The requested item record. And what are my, what are the rules? We're going to choose when anyone approves and we're going to say the employee's manager. So we're gonna look for the manager of this employee. I've passed manager, have I? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong record. Sorry, we're supposed to be looking at who is this requested for. Excuse me. So there we go. Yes. So that's where we get the manager. I just want to show you guys that one more time. These are just the functions. These are full designer functions. But you see, we get the get catalog variables who's requested for a manager. And then we click on done. So now we go into, we're saying when this has been approved, we want to set our parallel um, logic. So first we're going to set a if statement. So we're saying if approved, if request has been approved, that's when we want to run our parallel logic. So. We're saying if ask for approval, approval state is approved. Then we click on done. So now that we have set our if condition, 
we can now go into our do the following until parallel logic so we click on flow logic we click on do the following I'm sorry do the following in parallel I, I, my apologies if I said until parallel but, so we select the do the following in parallel and then we go in to set the actions that we want to run so the first action we want is to create a task after this has been approved, we want to create a task for the software asset team to basically revoke any devices. So we're going to click on, I can just search up catalog task and it should show up, yeah. So we're creating a catalog task for the requested item record. We're saying, please, kindly revoke any software devices for this employee. And then we're adding the field because we're the field assignment group because we're assigning it to the software asset group. <clears throat> Then we're going to also select our catalog item just so the software asset group can um, see the variable of who the employee is. So this is just an extra addition um, requirement. So you'll see what it looks like on the task, what this is. And then for our next parallel, we also want to Set, send an email. I'm going to be sending it to the service now or the company's HR, um, HR badge team. And in this case, we're just, I'm just going to say service now badge team let me say hr badge team at gmail.com then we're just gonna put a subject well after we are basically done we're basically done with creating our parallel logic we're going to set our else statement to end our flow so and we're done so let's quickly go over what we did one more time before we get to testing so basically our flow is setting the trigger to service catalog. We're getting the catalog variables from the catalog item that we were created earlier. And then we're asking for approval. If this request has been approved, mind you, if this does not get approved, we go all the way down to our else statement and we end the flow. But if it does get approved, we go into our do the following in parallel logic, which we're setting two actions which run in parallel so this goes ahead to create a catalog task which assigns it to the software asset group in order to have them revoke access for this employee and then this sends an email to the company's hr team the hr badge team to revoke id access for the employee that requested leave and then we end the flow so let's go ahead and activate our flow and test it. So now that our flow has been activated, I'm just gonna go to the catalog item that we created and I'm going to now go ahead. We're now able to set the flow here since we have created a flow. So I believe the name was employee lead separation I'm going to save that and now I'm going to try do the set the try it button 
and just put a bunch of test demo information here. Click on order now. Go to the requested item. Go to the request. This is the request and now we're in the requested item, sorry. And then we see we have an approve. So what we do, this is the manager of the employee requesting leave. So what we're gonna do here is just approve this. And now once this is approved, a catalog, I, a catalog task would populate and we see that over here and we see that it is assigned to the software asset group and we also see the short description now let's take a look at that extra step that we did which was setting the variables and we see that step right here when we set the variables to for this group the software asset group to see whoever is they're doing this for so we see that and then we're also going to be able to see at the same time the email that was sent out to the company's HR badge um, team to revoke ID access and we can see that in outbound emails and we can see that right here. The group, the I mean the email that we created. If we click on it, we see the subject that we created, and then we also see the body as well. So this just shows our, as you can see, our do the following until parallel logic, how actions are being executed parallel without it having to depend on each other. And we can see that with the example that I just showed right here. So let's just go back and close I'm just gonna go back and close my catalog task and there we go and we are done we have successfully completed our flow implementation for today so I hope you were able to learn something new about do the following until parallel, do the following in parallel. My apologies if I keep calling it until parallel. It's so easy to get the until, do the following until and do the following. Cause they're basically, they have the same three first words. But dude, I hope you were able to understand something from this do the following in parallel logic. And I urge you to hop on your flow designer and see what you can do with this parallel logic as well. And I will see you next time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and see you soon. Bye.